My name is Cathy Constable. I'm a professor of geophysics at Scripps Institution of Oceanography at the University of California, San Diego. And what I do in my research is to study the magnetic field and how it changes on all time scales. So what is the magnetic field? It's a representation of the magnetic forces that are present in space. Those forces are produced by some material that's magnetic, and that could be either by moving charges in the form of electric currents or permanent magnets. And uh, the thing about the magnetic field is it permeates all of space, but we can't feel it directly ourselves. So it's not like the gravity field, which we have to resist just in order to stand up. Most people are familiar with the idea that permanent magnets have two opposite poles, north and south, and that the Earth also has a north and south poles. Uh, like poles in a permanent magnet exert a repelling force on each other and opposite poles attract. And if you have a magnetic compass, then it will point towards the north magnetic pole. But that detects only the direction of the horizontal part of the field. In our three-dimensional world, we need to measure the complete magnetic vector, which might point downwards, in, mostly in the northern hemisphere. And we can use globally distributed measurements to map magnetic lines of force. So the magnetic measured field changes in both space and time. And uh, those changes go across a huge range of time scales. And they also uh, depend on where the magnetic field source is coming from. The largest part of the magnetic field here on Earth's surface has its origin deep below us in the liquid outer core. Okay. So in the liquid outer core, there's very high temperatures and high pressures, and it's basically composed of liquid iron and nickel, which is very electrically conducting. And the fluid flow that occurs in there results from thermal and compositional buoyancy. So thermal, high temperature and heat flow and light material drive convective flows like boiling a kettle. And so the very high electrical conductivity and fluid flow induce changes in the magnetic field. This convection is also influenced by the Earth's rotation and it has continually sustained the internal magnetic field throughout Earth's history. So that's for up to four and a half billion years. A much smaller contribution comes from the ionosphere, which starts at about 100 kilometers above us. Um, and above the surface, and it's driven by the diurnal, the daily rotation of the Earth under the Sun, where the ionosphere gets heated and that drives changes in the magnetic field and electric currents. Further out, we have the magnetosphere, which extends to several Earth radii, okay, and this is the region where there's interaction of the internal field with charged particles that come from the Sun in the solar wind. Separating the effects of the different sources of the field is really important for our understanding of how it all works. And that's where the ground spectrum comes in. So the magnetic field varies geographically and on a huge range of timescales that reflects its evolution over Earth's history. And the ground spectrum is a way of looking at how the energy in the largest scale variations of the field are, is distributed according to frequency. This structure in the spectrum shows the different physical sources that I just talked about. So it's what we call a red spectrum. Uh, what does that mean? That means that the largest changes occur at the longest periods. And the largest changes that we see are in geomagnetic reversals, which occur at irregular intervals. Sometimes they happen every 10 million years. Sometimes they happen five times per million years. But when they do happen, there are very the magnetic field has to decrease essentially to go away and then recover again. Um, further up the frequency scale, so at shorter periods, we see other changes in the internal field that are due to the convective processes in the core. And as we move even further up, we get to this place where the internal field variations overlap with the external variations due to changes in the magnetosphere and the solar wind. And those are between about 11 years and a day. And we see a different structure in the spectrum there. Then we move into the realm where we're looking at changes in the ionosphere, which happen on daily and seasonal variations. 
And as we go further and further up the spectrum, we move into the realm of man-made sources. We also see the structure of uh, changes in the external magnetic field due to space weather, and that's a really important structure. We put all these together and we get a whole picture of the large-scale variations in the Earth's magnetic field. That's what the grand spectrum is. Why do we care about the magnetic field? Uh, internal magnetic field is important because its force field acts like an umbrella. It shields us from the solar wind um, and magnetic storms and cosmic radiation. These are all effects that come from the sun. And it deflects the charged particles flowing in the solar wind around the Earth so they don't reach us where they can do damage to the environment and to various life forms. It's also true that without the protection of the Earth's magnetic field, we might lose our atmosphere because the atmosphere would be stripped off by the flow of the solar wind. So that suggests that the existence of the Earth's magnetic field may be important to the origin and evolution of life. We might not be here without it, or something else would be here. The high field strength that we have right now is a key to a lot of our technological developments and uses. So there's a lot of concern about uh, space weather and changes in the climate. So those are due to space weather is the part of the magnetic field that comes from the external field. And what will happen when the Earth gets weaker? We'll have to uh, build new resistance to that into our technological um, uses of the, in the environment. So many life forms are used the magnetic field for navigation and for orientation and for location. We as people use magnetic compasses, less so now than we used to. Mostly we use our mobile phones for navigation, but the mobile phones actually contain um, information about the magnetic field in order to facilitate that navigation. Animals like uh, sharks, crabs, turtles, Birds, bacteria are all using the magnetic field uh, as a mechanism for uh, knowing where to migrate and which way, in the case of bacteria, they know which way to swim to the surface or back down, perhaps. There are numerous applications for the geomagnetic field in Earth sciences. It played a key role in the plate tectonic revolution. It's used in tectonic studies to understand how rocks have moved and deformed over time. It's used as the basis of a dating tool known as the magnetostratigraphic timescale, which maps the reversal of the magnetic field over time. And it's also used in the study of Earth's history and evolution um, as we look at how the magnetic field has changed in the past four and a half billion years.